In this video, we will tackle some basics of MicroPython. I will be showing you a quick demo in using the Tony Python IDE. Then we will learn some fundamental information you can use to easily jump in using MicroPython. For this tutorial, I choose to use Tony Python IDE because it is simple to use and it has all the necessary tools for MicroPython development. In Tony Python IDE, this is the main editor where MicroPython code could be created. You can work on a number of files using tablature or tabs like this. This is the shell terminal. It is a serial terminal for the interactive prompt or REPL or read, evaluate, print, loop. With this REPL, we can say print, we can print a hello, like this. And in order to access the MicroPython file in microcontroller, go to view, menu, then select files. And as you can see, the MicroPython device has the boot.py only. Because newly plush MicroPython firmware usually contains boot.py only. This is executed once every boot up of the microcontroller. It behaves similar to setup function of the Arduino. There are three ways to test a MicroPython code. Number one, through a shell terminal, which is the REPL. Number two, through the main editor, you can simulate directly. Let's say, print, hello, uh, MicroPython, or hello to MicroPython, like this. And let's save it as in the computer, hello, dot pi. And let's run it. And as you can see, the result is here. We can run it again, like that. So another way is using the actual MicroPython device or our ESP32. So to do that, we can, we can print another string. Let's say, hello from tech to tinker and go in the file menu then click save or save us save in MicroPython device and name it as main.py and to run it you just need to run the script and as you can see, it says hello from tech to tinker. We can run it again, like that. Now let's tackle some fundamental. These are some of the basics we need to get started with our MicroPython journey. Disclaimer, these tutorials aim to teach a MicroPython beginners to easily jump in and start coding for microcontrollers. And if you need to deepen your knowledge, there are a lot of information available in internet. Number one, modules. Let's see the modules available in MicroPython by uh, typing help and single quote modules. And let's hit enter. And these are the available modules for us which we can use. Machine and time modules are the commonly used modules. Number two, variables. One of the features of MicroPython is we don't need to declare data types. Let's create a variable, let's say x is equal to 3 and let's enter. So to print, print x. 
And as you can see, we do not declare the variable type. We can change the x to upload, let's say 3.14, and we can print the x. We can change the, this is still variable, this x variable to a string, let's say, uh, hello, x. As you can see, the type of the variable constantly changes according to how we use it. Number three, function. Function in MicroPython is easily created by using DEF keyword like this. Let's create a function, let's say, to print a certain nickname. Let's call it print nickname. And let's pass a single argument, let's say nickname, and colon, then hit enter. Notice the use of colon character and the indentation. In MicroPython, there is no curly braces like in C programming language. The indention dictates and tells the MicroPython interpreter that a certain statement in code is included in the function. Now, inside the function, let's, let's print a string nickname. Print my name is plus to append then append the nickname the nickname variable that we pass then hit enter twice now we can call the print nickname function and let's pass an, a nickname let's say print let's use the uh, function and let's pass a name let's say John and when we hit enter it should print my name is John we can use it again let's say print nickname as Kyle and hit enter and it prints, my name is Kyle. Another advantage of using function is reusability. Reusability means we can reuse a function as many times as we like, just like in the print nickname function that we created. Function could also return a value. Let's say we create another function, define a def, uh, let's say sum. And we ask for two variables, A and B. And inside the function, we can return A plus B. Hit enter twice. And we can use the sum. Let's say tempo, temp. Let's create a variable temp. Then sum, let's say a number 3 plus 4, uh, 3 plus 4 should be 7, right? Not yet, because we need to print the temp. Just like this. Or, we can print directly sum of, four, let's say 4 plus 5, 4 and 5. Enter, should be 9. Notice that Print is also a function that prints an input parameters. It prints these input parameters. Number four, conditional statements and code flow control. There are three commonly used conditional statements that we should be familiar with. Number one is if statements. So let's say, let's create a code here x is equal to 3 and let's check if x is equal equal to 2 then print x is 2 else 
let's say print x is not 2 like that and save it as let's say test 0 2 and let's simulate it as you can see x is not 2 so let's change this one as 2 save and run it now the value is 2 x is 2 and if you need to check additional condition let's say if x is 0 print something we use l if l if x is equal equal to 0 then let's print something print x is 0 save it and run it currently x is 2 let's change this one save and run now x is 0 number 2 while loop commonly used while loop is the one we always see which is the while true this is the commonly used while loop which creates an eternal loop eternal loop means it continuously loops until such time that you press the reset button another while loop statements could be let's say uh, let's create a new source code let's say I want to print hello micropython string five times so let's create a variable x as a counter or counter is equal to zero while counter is less than to five we print uh, hello micro python then let's increment the counter we can do like this counter plus one or to make it shorter we can plus then equal one and to use this we can save it as counter counter and run it as you can see it prints hello micropython five times try it again okay number three for loop let's create a new micropython code and let's say you want to print a number from 0 to 10 that is for uh, for x in range of 0 to 0 to 10 so this is 11 print x and let's save is as as for loop and let's run it as you can see it prints 0 to 10 what if we want to print uh, in increment by 2 so we need to input another argument which is the increment let's say 2 so this one it increments by 2 save then run as you can see 0 2 4 6 8 10 what if we want to decrement so we can change this one as 11 uh, 10 let's say we want to uh, count from 10 
to 0. So that is 10 to negative 1 to include the 0. And this one is minus 1. Save this one and print. 10. How about to decrement every 2? We change this one as 2. Then save. Then run. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Simple, right? In the next video, we will explore the general purpose input and output. That should enable us to drive an output device such as an LED or read an input device like a switch. In any ways you have some confusion, you may write it out in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me thumbs up by clicking the like button. And please share this to your friends. By doing that, it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And please do not forget to subscribe for more videos like this. You may also like to check out the companion blog post for this tutorial at techtothinker.blogspot.com. I am posting more details in that blog post for your reference. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Stay safe everyone. Bye.